Well, hello, Clay. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Third year in a row on Oracle TV. You getting tired of us yet? I, you have no idea. <laughs> At the first one, you were tired of us. I, look, let's put it this way. I'm glad that we have interesting things to talk about this year. All right. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. You've got your, your keynote coming up. And uh, can you give us a little sneak peek at what we might hear? Sure. Well, first, I will say um, I think it's the best one we've done so far. Uh, and I don't say that lightly. We've got some really great customers. We've got some great partners. Um, some, we have a really cool customer that has in the media business that has some really interesting stuff to show. So I think there's a lot of flash and sizzle. Um, but in terms of content, look, you know, we've been talking about how OCI is different, about how not only can we scale up, we can also scale down. And then if you look at what we're doing with dedicated region and alloy and what we're doing with multi-cloud, a lot of it is about how we can scale out. So uh, there's a lot of very interesting content that talks about how if we really invest in the fundamentals of cloud, um, it can do transformational things for the cloud industry and then for our customers as well. So scaling up, down, out, any, are there any directions we haven't scaled yet? Uh, well, I think in three-dimensional space, we've got them covered. Oh. But, but if we look at more like a hyper-dimensional thing, there's so many extra dimensions. We're going to need quantum computing to figure that out. I, if anyone can, that AI is going to solve it for us. That's a good point, which is uh, appropriate. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. Um, so in terms of all this scale, what are some of the customer demands that are driving this? Sure. So I, I like to talk about this kind of in, in the two bookends. So on the one hand, you know, we have many dedicated region customers. These are individual corporations like Vodafone who want to be able to take the best of Oracle Cloud and bring it into their data centers. It's our alloy providers. These are people like NRI, uh, Fujitsu, um, Telecom Italia, who want to be able to take the best of Oracle Cloud, combine it with their differentiated services and offer it to their customers. But to do that, they need to be able to scale the cloud down so they can start small. Not many corporations in the world can afford to buy you know, multiple hundreds of rack regions to start. So with our new announcement of dedicated region 25, where we can fit everything in an OCI region into three racks, uh, it's a really huge enabler for our dedicated region customers and our alloy customers. But then on the other side, right, as you might have heard Larry talk about or what we've been doing around AI and superclusters, our next generation of OCI supercluster that now supports up to 131,000 GPUs, where we're talking about data centers that span, you know, hundreds of megawatts to power this entire cluster. You know, OCI has really got the full gambit of scaling down as well as scaling up, all with the exact same set of functionality, all with the same services, the same high security, the same availability goals. It's interesting that you talk about some of the customers you, you mentioned, Vodafone and, and so on. And, and, you know, I think we, you know, in the early days of cloud, we've, we've sort of thought about like one size fits all, you know, and just whatever your workloads are, move them over. But there, there are different needs. It's not just about size. It's, you know, you talked about alloy. We've talked about sovereign. You know, there are different security needs. There's like the idea that I want to start slow um, or that I want it more control in my data center. It's all over the board, right? It is. And look, if, if you've been around in the computing industry for a while, you know, in the beginning, we had these really big computers and there were relatively few of them, right? At IBM and you had the mainframes and then... Eventually, they created this concept that they were called mini computers right. that were just only as big as like a portion of your house. Right. Um, and over time, what happened is that things got smaller and they became more decentralized to where suddenly that was where the PC revolution came about. And then, and then suddenly you've got now, you know, a tablet on your desk or a phone in your pocket. Well, the same thing is happening in the cloud. The beginning of the cloud was relatively few, very big things. And, but the reality is people want a ubiquitous cloud and they want choice. And so what we've been doing at Oracle is instead of just saying, hey, it's still the mainframe era, we need to be able to take this technology, enable different people to operate it and provide it so you have choice, as well as make it ubiquitous everywhere you want it. So that will be in every country and every uh, you know, layer of, of regulatory control, but also you just want it in your own data center. So I think it's still very early days of the cloud transformation. And we don't have to be that smart to see where it's going because there's so many industries that have transformed this way in the past. We have to just solve the problems that are making it impossible. And that's what we've been doing with things like dedicated region 25. So let's talk about de dedicated region 25. 
how small is small. Look, three racks is pretty small. I mean, it's, look, I, I don't want to have to carry them home with me every day. I can't put them in my backpack. But when you think about the capacity to run an entire cloud region, three racks is not a lot. Um, and I think we'll continue to evolve and be able to compress that more and more. But we're now at a place where if you can take three normal size racks and put them in a data center, uh, you, pretty much anyone who wants to do some serious computing can do that. And now we have that product available. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Are, are there some special use cases for uh, a rack that size? Um, there are. I mean, uh, uh, one of the things that's kind of unique about this offering is that it will fit in different locations. So um, one of the things that we also heard as feedback about dedicated region was that not everyone had contiguous space and power. So we've made the rack such that we can actually place them anywhere in the data center and they're really easy to network together. And so everything's still fully secure, uh, but you can fit them into your existing data center. And everything that's available, like AI. Yes. On dedicated region 12. A hundred percent of our services are available everywhere. So whether you want to do use our Gen AI service or you want to use compute storage networking, you want the latest and greatest of Oracle Exadata or Autonomous Database, or if you want to be able to use our Postgres service or MySQL Heatwave, all of it's available in that same footprint. It's, it's interesting that we're kind of, I feel like we are following the needs of our customers when we build these out. I heard Safford talk about this, earnings after earnings after earnings. You know, we're building it when the customers want us to. And so all of these offerings are kind of examples of we've had the demand, now we must build it. Correct. A lot of the reason that we've worked on this smaller footprint is not because we just like things to be small. You know, we, our original version of dedicated region started off on the order of 25 to 30 racks. And customers said, love the product, just too big and expensive. And so we shrunk it and we got it down to 12 racks uh, about a year ago. And now we've got it down to three. Um, and we've done that purely due to customer feedback. Customers love the product. They just want it, you know, smaller, easier, cheaper, more flexible. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. But, you know, we're not necessarily hearing the competition talk about this sort of stuff. Well, I think, I think it's because at least in this part of our business, we don't really have any competition. Um, it's a strategic decision to decide if you're going to compete in that market. I mean, imagine for a minute if, um, let's say that you were building mining trucks, right? And everyone's building mining trucks and there's a big competitive market for mining trucks. And suddenly you had the idea of, wouldn't it be cool if you could build a pickup truck? And you go, wow, well, that's interesting. We could build it and we had different customers and they would use it for different things. It, the fact that we now have this thing that's a pickup truck, maybe the other mining truck companies want to compete in that space, but a lot of them don't. They go, we don't see the need for this. You should really just be buying mining trucks and pickup trucks, those really are the future. That's where I think people don't understand the thought leadership that we have at Oracle. We have a fundamentally different vision of the way the cloud works. Our competitors believe there's going to be relatively few clouds and they're going to be very large. Our perspective is different. We believe there's going to be a lot of clouds and they're going to be of varying sizes from very, very small to very, very big. So you talked before about all the regions we can be in and Larry's talked about, you know, building hundreds and hundreds of data centers around the world. You know, how, how does this benefit the customer? Well, it benefits the customers in, in multiple ways. So one is um, you get a higher level of control and sovereignty, right? So your data stays in your country. It's operated possibly by people uh, who abide by the laws and regulations of your area. That's important for some customers. Another big reason is about latency. So for example, um, you know, we're working with some companies that work on the animation side and they have artists that want to be able to do real time kind of things that would normally be done on a workstation. Well, if the cloud's close enough, you don't have to have it on your desk. It can just be right down the road, but very low latency. And then the other aspect of it is control. Um, sometimes what you have is you have a bunch of workloads that can't move outside of your control. It's very important, whether it be for regulatory reasons or security reasons. So if you can instead bring the cloud to those workloads, you can get the benefits of the cloud um, in your existing environment. You mentioned um, some things like uh, workloads you can run, and we've touched on partnerships a little bit already, but let's talk about the work that we're doing there deals with Microsoft, Google, now AWS. Um, can you talk about how you see our multi-cloud strategy and what it offers customers? Sure. So our multi-cloud strategy, I see in many ways is an extension of kind of that basic cloud strategy I talked about earlier, where we believe that the cloud 
services need to be available everywhere you want them. So as Oracle, you know, Oracle Database is a very popular product. It's been, got a long history and a lot of customers depend on it. And so one of the things that we've been hearing for many years is customers of ours who consume our database products, but also you know, consume other cloud platforms. They say, hey, I really want the best and, uh, and brightest of the Oracle database platform here. And so it started a few years ago with Microsoft. We started with the interconnect at the infrastructure layer. A year ago, we launched Oracle database at Azure, which allowed customers to consume Oracle database services with, through Azure, but it was the full OCI stack, but procured and you know, paid for using their Azure commitment. A quarter ago, we announced a new partnership with Google, and just now we launched four of those new regions with Google. Right. Uh, Twelve of those are interconnect regions. And then today, you heard us talk about how, well, we just launched our new AWS partnership, uh, which is very similar. So they're not, they're not going with the interconnect option, but Oracle database at AWS. So that you can take the greatest, AW, uh, the greatest Oracle database services and integrate that into AWS. Our customers are very excited about this because they fundamentally get the best database services available, no matter what cloud you're on. It's so interesting. I went back two years and watched Larry's keynote where he talked about walled gardens, these mm -hmm. walled cloud gardens, you know, and I'm old enough to have, have remembered the original walled gardens type conversations, right? right. And, and, you know, it was sort of like, wait, what is he saying? He talked about, you know, Snowflake, a, a competitor of sorts on stage and how they were deploying Snowflake in multiple clouds. And he's like, hey, we got the hint. We think that's a good idea. We're going to do it too. Um, it kind of changes. We're competing and yet cooperating with these other cloud providers. Um, that's a hard thing to do. How, how, how are you looking at that? I think it's only hard if you make it hard. I think if you look at a lot at, across most large technology companies, we're constantly competing and cooperating. Sure. Um, you know, for a long time, Oracle Database runs on Windows and we certify it and we make sure it works incredibly well. Um, there are many, you know, we make sure that Java runs on top of all different operating systems and different sure. kind of uh, run times. So I think that you have to recognize that when there's a synergy where us working together is beneficial for us and for customers, that's where we do it. I think what Oracle's doing that's different is that we're not just running our services on top of the other clouds. It's the fact that we are extending OCI into those clouds, um, which has huge benefits for us. It has huge benefits for customers. And it also means that our multi-cloud partnerships get the latest and greatest technology. They're never lagging behind. I think ultimately, though, you know, as you see industries mature, you always end up with interoperability and customer choice. Customers demand it. They'll, right. they'll put up with it in the early days, but as things mature and, and um, the needs become clearer, customers, it's very important to them that they have all of their suppliers working together. And if you don't, typically you're the odd person left out. Right, right. I mean, I, I, it's just so interesting, you know, our partnership with Google, you know, being able to, with our database service running in the cloud, also have that work with BigQuery, have that work with Gemini AI, have it, have it work with whatever their services are or ours if they want them. Um, but that is the way, you know, when Larry was on stage two years ago, he talked about operating systems. You wouldn't write an application that back in those days didn't run on OS2 and Windows and the Mac OS and Unix. Right. Um, and so this is just our version of that in some ways. It, it is, and I think that, look, the. The thing to understand is that in the cloud infrastructure space, it feels like we're very mature, but it's still very, very early days, right? If you go back to the very early days of PCs, there were lots of applications that only ran on Mac or they only ran on, on you know, Windows or DOS. Or, and then what people realized was if you wanted to be successful, you had to be multi-platform, right? That was the only way you could actually really grow your market share and be ubiquitous. The same thing is happening here. We realize that the only way to, I think, get to that next level of cloud adoption is to actually work together. And I'm encouraged by the fact that it's not just Oracle, it's the fact that we're able to reach these agreements with our sometimes competitors, also cooperators, that's very exciting for the industry, right? Yeah, um, I would be remiss not to uh, just ask about our advantage with NVIDIA. Um, how do you see that having evolved over the last couple of years and into the future? Sure. Um, I think sometimes people don't fully understand 
the difficulty of the, the care and feeding of uh, GPU clusters. So sometimes people think, oh, well, you just buy some GPUs and you plug them in and you're done. It's way more complicated than that. There's the construction of the data centers themselves, there's the shift from air cooling to liquid cooling that's required to be able to power these incredibly dense racks. There's a massive amount of network engineering and network design that goes in to interconnect all of these things together. There's the tuning and performance optimization of those networks. There's the processes that you use to analyze and fix the, the faults that happen in these hardware systems. How do you do your sparing program? How do you quickly repair stuff as it breaks? Um, and then there's the entire software stack on top of it, your Kubernetes stack, your OS, all to be able to run and optimize these GPU workloads. It's not for the faint of heart. Yeah. And you don't just go to the store and, you know, put a couple in your basket and you walk home and it works. And so the thing that we are doing incredibly well at Oracle, and we have a great partnership with NVIDIA, we, we you know, are design partners and we build new hardware systems together and test them out in very large scale labs. We're committed through our deep expertise in high performance, high availability, reliable systems. It's something we've been working on for a very long time at Oracle, and that's what's making you know, the, the end user experience, the intangible so good. And that's why customers are choosing us over the other options. Yeah. You, you gave us a nice tour of the Salt Lake City data center. I hope we didn't leave too much of a mess when we were there. No, it, was, it all worked out just great. Okay, good. Um, last question is, um, Stafford talks a lot about customers succeeding on cloud and with AI. Do you have a couple of favorite OCI customer stories or, or your favorite more recent customer stories? Look, there's, there's so many, right? There's XAI training Grok2 on our platform. There's, there's Suno using, uh, you know, creating uh, AI generated music. There's no so cool. There's, uh, you know, customers like uh, Mosaic and Lambda. There's, there's too many to talk about. Um, the reality is, is that far more of uh, these AI companies actually run on OCI than, than don't. Um, and what I'm excited by is that not only is it, uh, you know, uh, language, right? It's not only large language models where they're doing text to speech or, or uh, you know, text to text, but it's multimodal. It's picture interpretation. It's video generation. It's incredible to see the rapid rate at which these these AI models are changing and evolving so quickly. Yeah, it really is. Well, good luck on your keynote, and thank you so much for joining us again today. Thanks for having me, Fritz.